We are here this morning on State of Florida versus Michael Keatley, case number 10. 10- 18429. Former ice cream truck driver Michael Keatley is preparing to go on trial for a second time for the same crime. Upon further deliberation and discussion, the jury has not reached a unanimous verdict, period. The jury is hung, period. This is not going to change, period. And um, at this time, ladies and gentlemen, I am declaring a mistrial in the case. Keatley is charged with murder and attempted murder for a 2010 shooting that left two brothers dead and four people injured. Prosecutors claim it was a case of vigilante justice after an armed robbery on his ice cream truck crippled his hand. But this time around, Keatley will be without his longtime defense attorney, Leanne Gowdy, who made a tactical decision to not make a closing argument in his last trial, stunning the prosecution and depriving them of a rebuttal argument, the jury in that case deadlocked. We have nothing else to say to the jury. You're comfortable that you um, know what you're doing when you make that decision not to have Ms. Gowdy present a closing argument, is that correct? Yes, sir. Are you satisfied with the services of your attorneys up until this time? Absolutely. Gowdy stepped away from Keatley's case after the mistrial, saying she only ever committed to one trial. Now, she is set to become a circuit court judge. It was very hard watching that file go out of my office. But at the same time, I feel that it went to attorneys that can also do an excellent job for him. But now Keatley's new attorneys from the public defender's office want out, filing a motion claiming a conflict of interest in the case. Keatley, who remains in jail until trial, tried to make his displeasure known to the court, but was shut down first by his own attorney. Mr. Keatley is entitled to competent counsel under our Constitution, but he is not entitled to the counsel of his choosing. Then by the judge. All right, do you have any opposition to the court allowing the public defender's office to withdraw? Yes, I do. Okay, all right, stop right there. But as the hearing came to a close, Keatley insisted on being heard. Uh, Yes, Mr. Keatley. um... What I have a question is is that when when a public defender's office says, well, you know, there could be a a conflict when it uh, uh, goes to a strategy or something, well, what if... You decide, okay, we're going to give it over to to regional council. Regional council looks at the case and says, you know what? We don't agree with 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 some of the the strategies set aside by the by the previous. Well, Mr. Keatley, let me let me stop you there because I'm very concerned about um, you are represented and you're represented at this time. I invited you in the beginning for the limited opportunity to see whether you oppose or not, because um, it would have been very simple had you not opposed it. No, no offense to you. I'm not suggesting that, that you change your mind or that your mind should have been uh, different in the beginning. But to to allow you to speak and ask questions at this time, um, those are certainly bridges that uh, we'll cross when and if we come to them. Judge Sabella ended up granting the motion, and when Keatley stands trial again, a new team from the public defender's office will face off with prosecutors who believe they have enough evidence to put Keatley away for life. It was an amazing trial, and and there was some really good lawyering. Leanne Gowdy, who was the Um, the lawyer who represented Keatley, uh, incredible strategy move at the end. Um, You know, prosecutors go first and last during closing arguments, and the defense goes in the middle. So the prosecutor gave like this real mini opening closing argument, and there really wasn't much to it. And then she said, we waive ours. And then the prosecutor was stuck because they were expecting to be able to do a rebuttal. Never happened. Jury hung, and they were leaning for not guilty, unbelievably, in this case, despite the evidence that I saw personally watching the trial. But a little bit of a mess right now. We'll we'll see how it all pans out. Let's bring in Lee Perlman, criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor, uh, joining us from down in Tampa. Uh, uh, Lee, great to see you again. Let's start here. I I get the feeling that this guy who has served, has been behind bars for more than a decade now at this point, waiting for, you know, a final verdict in his case, Um, is a bit of a high-maintenance client, especially at this point, having gone through an entire trial and, you know, survived because the jury was hung. What's your take on this guy? Yeah, I mean, that'll happen, right? You you have a scenario where he's been sitting in custody for 10 years, right? He's been involved with every aspect of his defense. He had a phenomenal, phenomenal trial attorney the first time around, trial team, really. And, you know... 
become a little bit of a expert's not the right word, but you really do start to learn the intricacies of the law, at least how they relate to your case specifically and to you. And, you know, I'm sure the frustration mounts. It's hard. He went through an 11 day trial, right? 11 days on top of a decade in custody. You know, I, I at this point, I think almost anyone would be high maintenance. I, 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 so I can't blame him for that. And he saw a phenomenal legal strategy employed on his behalf. And it, you know, it worked. A, a hung jury, you know, the, the analogy is like kissing your cousin or something like that. It's, it's, but it's still on the defense side, especially when you, you have such a serious charge. It's a, it's a battle that you win, you know? So yeah, I, to answer your question, I'm sure he's become high maintenance if he wasn't in the beginning. Yeah. The bad news is though, from, um, my experience and, and watching trials here for a couple decades at Court TV and other places is that the retrials inevitably advantage prosecution. Every time. Every time. It, you know, you lose a lot of the surprise that you could have. You lose a lot of the, you know, unknown components. I'll tell you what's going to happen in this trial for sure. The state attorney is going to give a very long thorough, <laughs> comprehensive closing where everything is laid out as opposed to a 10-minute uh, uh, close where you think you're going to you know, wait and lay everything out in detail on rebuttal so you get all the, the big whams and the big hits for the, you know, the last thing the jury hears before they go to deliberate. So you, you're absolutely right. Every time it will favor um, the state. Now, I can tell you that's not always the case because the state also tends to show their hand too. I, I, personally, I did a uh, trial three times in Hillsborough County. It was a leaving the scene involving death. Uh, it was hung, hung, then not guilty. So while I, what you said is absolutely generally the rule, there are exceptions to that. So, you know, the state's shown its hand, everything's been said, everything's been done, all testimony has been taken on both sides. And here, you know, as you said, the jury was leaning towards not guilty, which I also, I'm, I'm with you uh, in your opinion, as far as there was a lot of circumstantial evidence, direct IDs, you know, it's, it's a very interesting case. It's almost a law school exam. Oh, absolutely. And, and to me, you know, circumstantial evidence is, to me, I find very compelling. And, and the one circumstance in this one that is still sticking in my head, right, is after the shooting, for whatever reason, he needs to get his van painted. And it's like an all-night right? all painting session. Like, who gets their, their vehicle painted, like, overnight? That, to me, that was, like, so obvious. Like, but the jury, again, the jury does what they do, and, and they were not convinced. They didn't find it so compelling. I did. Um, they do have ID problems, though, and that's the biggest problem that they have going in. Yeah, you're right. I mean, no one's disputing that this happened. The dispute is who did it. I, I'm with you. I, I've never done an all-night, you know, uh, car painting session, you know, out of – some exigency circumstance. I've also never had casings collected, you know, on my residence that in, at least in some way, shape or form match casings connected to the scene where the shootings occurred. Uh, I've, I've never had those address, you know, of uh, the, the murder scenes, like the address of, the, of where it took place written down in my house as well, in my own handwriting, multiple internet searches of it. Um, you know, I mean, the circumstantial evidence is severe. And then creeper, you know, this term creeper, it's not like it's a standard term that, you know, that you would use. He's looking for a man named creeper and his own friends, his own, um, you know, people who were family and, and close to him said, yes, he, he asked about this all the time. He was using his ice cream truck to look for creeper, you know, to your point of, of circumstantial evidence. And lo and behold, someone by the name of creeper lived, you know, across the street and wasn't out there that. Unbelievable. Lee Perlman, criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor. Great to have you on the program. Thanks so much. Twice in one week. I, I feel very lucky. Thank there you. you go.